The violin virtuoso Nigel Kennedy has revealed to Channel 4 News how fellow students at the Yehudi Menuhin School in Surrey told him they were abused by the musical director. It follows the conviction in February of an abuser at Cheetham School of Music in Manchester in a case that led to the suicide of a key witness. As well as new allegations of abuse, tonight this programme reveals claims that teachers had sexual relationships with pupils in all five of the elite music schools in Britain. This investigation from our North of England correspondent, Kieran Jenkins. It's like a disgrace, really, that people's trust has been abused in such a way. It wasn't comfortable, but I was scared of him and I wanted to please him so he wouldn't be cross. That's the best way I can put it. Instrumental teaching depends on one-to-one -one experience. That means you've got children who are deeply vulnerable. Every year, for over 40 years, hundreds of pupils have passed through the doors of the UK's five prestigious specialist music schools. Pupils as young as eight, studying intensely with giants of the music world, many backed by taxpayer support. Tuition that's often one-to-one -one and uniquely emotional, intimate and hands-on. But in February this year, a court case shook one of these schools to its core. Michael Brewer, the former director of music at the world-renowned Cheatham School, was convicted of sexually abusing a pupil 30 years ago. His victim, Francis Andrade, took her own life after the ordeal of giving evidence against him. The trial of Michael Brewer might suggest a problem with just one teacher in just one school. But we've been investigating reports of sexual abuse that go much further. We've spoken to victim after victim, making allegations against scores of teachers over four decades. What we've learned is that this is a scandal that implicates not just one, but all five of the UK's specialist music schools. This is the Yehudi Menuhin School. Among its first pupils in the early 60s was a young Nigel Kennedy. Here he is playing for the great Menuhin himself. With his mentor's help, he went on to become one of the world's most recognisable violinists. Some of his classmates, though, left the school deeply traumatised. It was only girls who were um, molested or abused. So with the boys, we were living in a strange atmosphere. You know, I have to say that even though it was a great privilege to be at a school like that, I don't have particularly happy memories because there were people the staff were ill-equipped to deal with children's problems, um, emotional problems or psychological problems. They were completely ill-equipped. Irita Kuchmi joined Kennedy at the menu in school when she was just nine. As she recalls her time there, one figure looms large. That's Mr Gazelle. Even now, that just that, it, it brings back such bad feelings. Marcel Gazelle was a revered pianist. He performed around the world, often at menu inside, and was a major recording artist. At the school, he was a powerful figure, its founding music director. Irita was terrified of him. If I made a mistake in a concert, I was summoned to Mr Gazelle's presence and he started to shout and rage and it was so scary as a small child. There's a little picture and he's got his arm on my shoulder. It was that kind of ownership. I was sort of like his property, his pupil, and therefore what he said went. But there was another reason Irita and other former pupils we've spoken to felt so uneasy around him. It didn't appear to me to be weird that he came up and woke us up in the morning. It was just the way it was at the school. How was I to know anything different? You know, my mum would come and wake me up in the morning. My, you know, more my mum than my dad. Um, but he would tickle under the sheets and it, it was more than that because I have my clearest recollection is that he ha his um, hands were on my bare skin in a place where they shouldn't be. 
Until now, Marcel Gazelle's reputation has remained untarnished as a musician and as a teacher. But we've been told he sexually abused not just Irita, but at least three young girls in his care. One of them says she even reported it to the school at the time and was told to avoid being on her own with him. I just know that um, Marcel Gazelle was a repeat offender and it wasn't, wasn't a one-off thing. It was something which was happening regularly. And I know that, like um, some of the girls concerned, have had tremendous psychological problems and issues to deal with since. Irita says her experience at the school cost her her childhood. I used to, when I was a very little girl at the school, when I was alone, hold my breath to try and stop living. And that, that sounds, you know, it's a, slightly, it's a very childish thing to do, but I just think if I stop breathing, then I'll die, then I won't have to face this anymore. Soon after, she left the school and gave up a promising career as a concert pianist. Marcel Gazelle died in 1969. Since then, legislation and safeguarding against sexual abuse have changed considerably. His family say they're shocked and surprised by the allegations, which they dispute entirely. One of his sons says he even spent time with his father at the school and saw nothing of concern. The school says the Yehudi Menuhin school was shocked and saddened to learn of the allegations. We have checked the records which survived from 50 years ago and can find nothing about any concerns expressed at the time. In accordance with our policies, we have reported these serious allegations to Surrey police. The school attaches the utmost importance to the safety and welfare of our students, as recent inspection reports show. This woman was a pupil at another specialist music school in the late 80s. At 17, she started with a new teacher. What happened still affects her now, and she doesn't want to be identified on camera. He had a very particular style of teaching, which seemed to involve sort of drawing the person out of themselves and expressing their emotions and talking about their emotions and being very open. And what did you find yourself telling him? Oh, pretty much everything and anything, all about what types of future boyfriends would suit me. I think I felt in awe, I think I felt beholden, I think I felt sort of completely wrapped up in, you know, like uncle, brother, lover, teacher, sort of every male figure that I could need, sort of wrapped in one, totally unhealthily. He would often teach at home. After one particular lesson, she says the mood changed entirely. I can remember it very vividly. The lesson was over, I was leaving. He then shut the blinds in the front room, which I thought, well, you know, that's very odd, odd thing to do. Why would you do that? Um, and his words were, I'm going to kick myself if I don't do this. And he proceeded to kiss me. What was going through your mind at that point? Oh, complete just shock. I hadn't expected it at all. She says she was just a naive 17-year-old, obsessed with her studies. Up until then, a virgin with little interest in boyfriends. And that first time in particular, when you, you had sex for the first time, did you feel that was something that you wanted or didn't want to happen? Oh, I know I didn't want it to happen. You know, I remember being sort of led up the stairs, and I remember specifically saying, if this is what I think it's going to be, then I'm not ready. Do you think you could have said no? I was so wrapped up in the whole s sort of his power, I suppose, that it was incredibly hard to. I wish I could have done more to say no properly. Since 2001, this kind of relationship has been illegal. It wasn't at the time, though, as she was over the age of consent. But she feels, at the very least, his behaviour was a gross abuse of his position. We understand this wasn't the only inappropriate relationship this particular teacher allegedly had with his pupils. We know of at least three women who say they were sexually involved with the same teacher at the same school. Shortly afterwards, two of them suffered mental breakdowns from which they've never truly recovered. As a result of the allegations, the teacher no longer works at the school, though he does continue to teach elsewhere. Staff and pupils at specialist music schools tell us these relationships weren't unusual, 
and that one-to-one -one lessons sometimes crossed the line. This woman taught at two music schools in the late 80s and early 90s. She's still teaching and doesn't want to be identified. In several of these specialist music schools, I'd even go so far as to say it was quite common. And there was a sort of sense in which it was being even beyond tolerated, because as a team of teachers, enough people were doing it for it to be more of a norm than should even be contemplated. Did you never think of blowing the whistle? Yes, I did. And in fact, I did raise concerns. But these setups tend to be extremely kind of defensive, and you as a whistleblower would tend to be seen as the troublemaker, not the other way around. This teacher says one-to-one -one lessons can still be exploited. How safe then from abuse do you think pupils in specialist music schools are these days? I don't think they're safe from it because none of these issues have been addressed. I mean, child protection has become much more of an established issue and there's a lot more infrastructure around it. But that doesn't change the nature of how this sort of teaching works. We contacted all five schools. They told us the welfare of pupils was their overriding priority. They said where necessary they've cooperated with the police and the relevant authorities. That the majority of the allegations are historic and recent allegations have been dealt with appropriately. They say their safeguarding procedures are sound and under constant review. Cheatham's school is now the focus of a major police investigation, looking into dozens of allegations of sexual abuse. Just last month, inspectors found damning safeguarding failures at the school. But there are now growing calls for all five elite music schools to embrace radical change. And throughout the music world, more and more people are speaking out. In the future, there's still going to be these charismatic teachers who play music fantastically well and who are looked at as if they're God by their students. And so it's going to be an ongoing problem that People just got to be much more careful. Nigel Kennedy talking to Kieran Jenkins. And the